We have revolutionized our perception of the universe in a matter of months, thanks to breathtaking images taken by the James Webb Space Telescope. The biggest telescope ever sent into orbit is the JWST. We finally got to glimpse its first photographs on July the 11th, 2022, and they were magnificent. Vast celestial landscapes of dust and gas were exposed, as were the farthest depths of the universe. There were massive, interacting galaxies and stars that were nearing the end of their lives. But even the most incredible images are only the tip of the iceberg. Mountains of data that will transform our understanding of the universe lie behind them. Join us as we explore how the James Webb Telescope's terrifying new image of city lights shocks the entire world. Seeing into the far reaches of the universe to learn how the first galaxies formed is one of the JWST's scientific goals. This is possible because it takes light billions of years to travel across our universe. The JWST observes these things as they appeared billions of years ago when it gathers this light. Astronomers measure distances in light years, which is the maximum distance light can travel in a year to account for this fact. And the team's initial graphic made a point of emphasizing this. It was a deep field photograph that was presented on July the 11th, 2022 by US President Joe Biden while he was speaking from the White House. As the Hubble Space Telescope focused on a single area of the sky for 10 straight days beginning on December 18, 1995, deep fields gained notoriety. The chosen area was merely a microscopic dot, making up around one millionth of the entire sky. The majority of the 3,000 previously undiscovered objects found by Hubble were galaxies that are located billions of light years away. A comparable tiny area of the sky is covered by the JWST's deep field, which is centered on the galaxy cluster SMAX 0723. The actual galaxy SMAX 0723 is 4.6 billion light years away. The more distant galaxies behind it are magnified by its powerful gravitational field. The background galaxies are distorted into large arcs where the gravitational field is strongest. In one instance, it was determined that it took a distant galaxy's light 13.1 billion years to reach the telescope after traveling through space. The light that is being released stretches as the universe grows. As they are so far away, the main target galaxies of the JWST have stretched visible lights from their stars into the infrared. Astronomers can directly compare JWST views with visible light photos of nearby galaxies taken by Hubble and other telescopes by gathering data at those wavelengths. This will demonstrate how galaxies develop throughout cosmic time, enlarging and consolidating into the structures we observe today. Even more astounding than the sheer number of galaxies in the JWST's first deep field image is how quickly it was captured, in only hours as opposed to days. Practically, wherever it searches, it cannot help but find galaxies. Galaxy clusters aren't the only objects acting as magnifying lenses. Scientists use the JWST to capture an image of a pair of galaxies, designated VV191, so they could study how the light from one of the pairs altered as it went through the other. The results of the investigation will reveal the properties of the intervening galaxy's dust. Galaxies and Black Holes Stefan's Quintet, a condensed collection of galaxies, was depicted in one of the JWST's initial photos. Four galaxies in this group are gravitationally interacting with one another because they are so close to one another. The grouping's fifth galaxy merely seems nearby. In actuality, it is considerably closer to us and merely happens to lie in the same line of sight. Together, the quartet of interacting galaxies form a laboratory in which astronomers may investigate the way galaxies interact and merge with each other. Such mergers are assumed to have been quite prevalent in the early universe, where they served as the main pathway for galaxies to develop into the enormous star cities we see today. Supermassive black holes, 
one of which is currently present in the center of every galaxy, are also assumed to have grown as a result of the mergers. The JWST examined Stefan's quintet using its NearCam and MIRI sensors. The MIRI photos specifically caught astronomers off guard since the galaxy's forms were not what they had anticipated. Another astounding result for the MIRI instrument came from the Phantom Galaxy M74. M74, a spiral galaxy 32 million light years from Earth, is nearly face on to us. For researching the enormous spiral arms that give spiral galaxies their name, it is a favorite. But no one has ever before seen it so plainly. For the first time, the spiral arms of the galaxy, where star formation is occurring, can be seen extending down into the galaxy's core. Collaborations will be a key focus, fusing the JWST's new observations with those from existing observatories to unlock a deeper understanding of the astronomical objects being examined, in addition to the brand new discoveries that everyone hopes the telescope will make. The life cycle of stars. Seeing deeply into the clouds where stars are formed is one area in which infrared astronomy shines. This is due to the fact that dust particles, molecules and atoms scatter less light at longer wavelengths. In actuality, at infrared wavelengths, the very objects that obscure our vision of the star nurseries become almost transparent. Another image from the JWST was NearCam's observation of the 7,500 light-year distant star-forming area NGC 3324 in the Carina Nebula. The Carina Nebula is beautiful. Although it is just gas and dust being sculpted by starlight, it appears to be a landscape. It's incredible that you can now use infrared to look inside it. What was once hidden is now openly displayed in all its splendor. It was given the name the Cosmic Cliffs when it was first discovered because the vast gaseous cliffs resembled a mountain range. It was actually the edge of a massive hole that was slowly being worn away by the powerful ultraviolet radiation from young stars. Pillars of Creation The Hubble Space Telescope's famous image of the Pillars of Creation is one of its most well-known images. These are the star-forming regions in the Eagle Nebula, a much larger cloud of interstellar gas. The JWST has recently conducted observations of this same region with its NearCam and MIRI instruments, allowing it to see deeper than ever before into the vast star nebula. The sporadic bright orange features that occasionally appear towards the tips of the fingers are one of the image's highlights. These shock waves are the result of newborn stars that are only now starting to produce energy through nuclear fusion. Huge jets of material are blasted during these intense processes, colliding with the dusty cocoon encircling each star, blowing it away and exposing the developing star to the rest of the universe. A similar but strangely distinct landscape is revealed by switching from the near-infrared image to Miri's mid-infrared region. Due to their lack of brightness at these wavelengths, the majority of the stars have now vanished. Instead, emissions from naturally occurring compounds, known as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, accentuate the dusty pillars. The most intriguing feature, though, is that occasionally brilliant stars can be glimpsed at the tips of the gaseous fingers. These are the young stars themselves, and a solar system of planets may surround each of them. The MIRI team was surprised by the outcome, even though they had always been aware of this observation. The JWST's new views of the Pillars of Creation will allow researchers to test their understanding of star formation and enhance their computer simulations of the process by providing more information than ever before. For a better understanding of how galaxies replenish their star-producing capacity, it is essential to know more about the particular number of young stars in these areas, the distribution of their masses, as well as the precise amounts of gas and dust that make up the nebula. At the other end of the stellar life cycle, 
the JWST has also been illuminating the way stars die. Sun-like stars swell to become red giant stars before contracting into white dwarfs, which are stellar corpses. They break apart during this collapse, ejecting their outer layers to create a planetary nebula, a moniker that is horribly inaccurate. The Southern Ring Nebula in the JWST's image demonstrates how stunning this process may be. The star periodically ejected shells of matter from its outer layers for thousands of years until it turned into a white dwarf. The remaining portion of the star would then begin to constrict and heat up, causing a fresh cycle of energy production to start a fresh round of pulsation, which would cause the ejection of a fresh shell of material. This continued indefinitely until there was simply insufficient matter left to pressure the star's core to ignite nuclear fusion anymore. It turned into a white dwarf at this moment. This is what our own Sun will experience in about 4.5 billion years. Exoplanets Even the JWST can't provide a detailed image of a planet outside of our solar system. It will need dedicated space expeditions with several space telescopes working together in cunning ways to create anything with any level of detail at all from an exoplanet, especially one the size of Earth, because it is so small and dark in comparison to its central star. The JWST has nonetheless captured one image of an exoplanet. Its designation is HIP 65426b. Its mass ranges from 6 to 12 times that of Jupiter, and its orbital distance from its star is around 100 times that of Earth's from the Sun. The JWST employed coronagraphs on its near-cam and MIRI equipment to view the extraterrestrial planet. A coronagraph dims the brightness of the main star, allowing the surrounding stars to be seen more clearly. The reason for its name is that astronomers created an instrument to investigate the corona, or fainter outer atmosphere, of our own Sun. It can now be used to detect fainter objects, including exoplanets close to far-off stars. On the exoplanet WASP-96b, astronomers performed precisely this with the nearest instrument of the JWST. The dispersion of infrared light from 0.6 to 2.8 micrometers was displayed on the ensuing graph. WASP-96b is noteworthy since it frequently crosses in front of its parent star. As a result, only a small amount of the star's light travels through the exoplanet's atmosphere before being absorbed by its atoms and molecules at their favored wavelengths. The intensity at those wavelengths decreases as a result of this. In this instance, the JWST demonstrated that the atmosphere of WASP-96b included water vapor. The planet is referred to as a hot Jupiter because it orbits its star so closely that a year only lasts 3.4 days, while having a mass that is around half that of Jupiter in our own solar system. Due to the need to create a computer model of the planet's atmosphere, the results themselves are still in the preliminary stage. The exoplanet's atmosphere's heights and thickness of any clouds, as well as the relative abundance of different gases in the atmosphere, are all factored into the model. The next step in this research is to expand it to progressively smaller exoplanets, eventually analyzing planets the size of Earth. Smaller worlds have less dense atmospheres, making this more challenging, but scientists are optimistic. We seem to be at the very, very start of a pretty thrilling journey. Besides, it is still early. The images that have already been made public are more like proofs of concept than complete scientific findings. They stand for assurance from the involved astronomers that the telescope is functioning and that the analysis, findings and scientific achievements will follow. Right now, it's incredibly thrilling and entertaining. Everything the JWST touches has something fresh and they are things that make you go wow. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. 
while you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.